What if I told you there was a single algorithm capable of generating stunning mountain ranges, realistic dirt textures, and even simulating the effects of water? The powerful technique behind it all is noise generation, more specifically, Perlin noise. Imagine standing on a flat, infinite plane, an endless expanse of nothingness. Now imagine we generate a map of values across that plane, using it to shape mountains, create textures, or even form clouds. With just this one algorithm, we breathe life into an empty world, making everything look more detailed and natural. Noise algorithms in general refer to distortions in signal, things like static on a television or tape hiss on old recordings, hardly useful. But in some cases, the variations in noise can be used to generate patterns. That's why noise algorithms are so popular. Perlin noise is one of the most effective, but before we can even get into that, let's talk about why noise makes everything look better. The most primitive noise generation operates on complete randomness, given the name white noise. White noise is completely unstructured, think of a grayscale image where each pixel gets a completely random shade of grey, and boom, you've got a noisy, static image. The benefit? It's totally diverse. Every outcome is equally probable, but it has no structure, so it's not great for things like texture or terrain. Now this is where Perlin noise comes in. It creates smooth, natural-looking patterns that feel connected and continuous. So, how does it work? The process is usually broken down into five steps. Perlin noise is what we call gradient noise, meaning it's built on a grid of directions rather than values. Sounds confusing? Let's break it down. First, we define a grid of points in an n-dimensional space, usually 2D for terrain generation, but this isn't always the case. At each of these grid points, we generate a pseudo-random gradient vector. These vectors are then normalized, which helps ensure that every point influences the noise equally, and the final result stays smooth. Now, notice we said pseudo-random. That means while the vectors may look random, they're actually generated in a predictable way using an algorithm. This allows for repeatability. If you use the same seed, you'll always get the same pattern. So in this first step, we're building a lattice and assigning a consistent, algorithmically generated direction to each point. Next, we calculate something called a dot product, a common operation in vector math that measures how aligned two vectors are. In Perlin noise, this is what creates that smooth directional flow and helps avoid blocky, unnatural terrain. Mathematically, a dot product is pretty simple. You multiply each component of two vectors, then add the results. The outcome is a single number, a scalar. Let's go back to our grid and pick a random point in space, PXY. This point is always surrounded by four grid points. From each of those, we draw a displacement vector pointing towards P. These show how far P is from each corner. Now for each of those four corners, we calculate the dot products between the displacement vector and the gradient vector assigned to that grid point. This gives us four scalar values, one from each surrounding corner. Now we have a value at every point in the plane, but currently it looks messy and jagged. Something's not quite right, and that's because we haven't smoothed it yet. For the third step in Perlin noise, we take those four dot product patterns and blend them using a smoothing function. This is what gives us the final natural looking result. To better understand how we should blend the values, let's take a cross-sectional view of the map. Since we've only used dot products so far, the noise resembles a series of straight lines, linear segments. If we try to blend them by simply averaging or picking midpoints, we just end up with more straight lines. The correct method of merging, however, is to use a smoothing function. For this, we can use a technique called linear interpolation or lerping. It's a simple way to blend between two values based on a percentage. Lerping is the simplest way to smooth between values. It just assumes a straight line transition. 
For example, if you interpolate between 1 and 2 at 50%, you get 1.5. At 25%, it's 1.25. Easy. Since Berlin noise applies interpolation inside each grid cell, let's isolate a single segment from our cross section and break it down. Now imagine splitting that line into 10 equal parts. At each tenth, we calculate a value based on its position. At 10%, we take a value 10% up the slope. At 20%, we're 20% along, and so on. This creates a smooth blend across that segment, but here's the catch. When we stitch two segments together, we still get sharp corners at the joins. That's because linear interpolation doesn't ease into or out of the transitions. It just connects the dots. This is why Perlin noise often uses more advanced moving curves like smooth step or quintic interpolation, which help eliminate those hard edges. Now the map's starting to take shape. The noise is smoothed horizontally thanks to our interpolation, but if you look closely, it's still a bit jagged along the vertical boundaries. To fix that, we do the same thing vertically. We take the two horizontally smooth values from above and apply another round of interpolation between them. This step blends the top and bottom halves of the cell, smoothing everything vertically. And that's it, we have our final result. A smooth, continuous gradient. At this point, you might be wondering if we already have smooth, natural looking noise why there's still more steps well perlin noise is powerful not just because it's continuous and organic but also because it's customizable we can control the level of detail in the final result the pattern we've created so far is known as the first octave of perlin noise it's perfectly usable on its own but we can enhance it by layering additional octaves on top each new octave is just another Perlin noise pattern, but at a different scale, with a more condensed grid, producing finer details. These patterns are added together simply using basic addition to create a richer, more detailed result known as fractal Perlin noise. This layering process introduces three new important variables. Octaves, how many layers of Perlin noise we combine. Lacinarity how much the frequency increases with each octave, and persistence, how much each successive octave influences the final result. For example, a persistence of 0.5 means each octave contributes half as much as the one before it. To demonstrate how this affects terrain, here's a mountain range with one octave, and here it is with six. Here's a mountain with less sonority changing from five to six, And finally, here's a mountain having its persistence change from 0.1 to 1. Now then, the final step is to use it. Apply it in any way you want, whether it be creating terrain, simulating the calming waves of an ocean, or generating the rough texture of a concrete block. Perlin noise is not the final step, but rather a tool to use in achieving beautiful procedural generation. While Perlin noise is not the only way to achieve variety, it's beautifully random, and we can all agree that it makes everything look better. <laughs>